This is Keeping New York History Alive, One Story at a Time. I am Bonnie Wood, presenting Jacob Schultz, A Family Saga. When I travel back in time to the 18th century, the water and the land are the lifeblood of the Schultz family. I imagine German Palatine immigrant Christian Otto Schultz on the ship Hope crossing the turbulent waters of the Atlantic Ocean in search of a new life in America. After arriving in Philadelphia, he tills the land on the Sharpenstein Farm in Wading River, New Jersey, and soon joins the farmer's sister, Christiana Margaret Sharpenstein, when she returns home to Rhinebeck, New York. Their decision to farm, first renting, then purchasing in Rhinebeck creates the setting for the Christian Otto Schultz family saga. From Schultz Landing to sloops in New Windsor, mills in Rock City and Schultzville, to plowing the land and transporting agricultural products to New York City, The Hudson River Valley remains the first home to Schultz descendants almost 300 years after the immigrant set foot on American soil. Regardless of where the descendants have settled throughout the centuries, the call to the water and the land is strong. This is the path to Schultz landing. Going back in history 300 years. This is a view of the Weehawken Bluff from the Hudson. Imagine Christian Otto Schultz may have seen boats such as this in the harbor, Philadelphia, when he arrived in America. From gone to sea to gone to the river, the perpetual call to the water passes from Father Christian to son Christian Schultz Jr. Esquire in his personal account, travels on an inland voyage through the states of New York and Pennsylvania, Virginia, Ohio, and Kentucky, and Tennessee through the territories of Indiana, Louisiana, Mississippi, and New Orleans, performed in the years 1807 to 1808, including a tour of nearly 6,000 miles to another son, Isaac, who settles in New Windsor, New York, as he sails the sloop Sally and Susan with his son on the Hudson River in 1794, and to Christian Otto Schultz's oldest son, Abraham, who sails the sloops Fanny, Mary, Industry, Superior, and Perseverance from 1799 and the same vessels and masters until 1825 on the Hudson River. Christian Otto Schultz's son Christian's book travels on an inland voyage. The link here is to the ebook. This is the story of his travels. And he was not the captain of the ships that he was on. However, he was telling the tales of traveling through all of these states and territories. Some fascinating tales are here. The link to the ebook is right there. So I definitely recommend that reading. 1731, now this is a timeline. This particular date is before Jacob was born. And there's a reason for that. This is a view from Jacob Schultz's grave site to his church, the Dutch Reformed Church established in 1731, now known as Rhinebeck Reformed Church. The link is to the address given at the celebration of the 150th anniversary of the church. And since the church was such a part of Jacob Schultz's life from birth until death, it's included here at the beginning of the presentation. This is a view from Jacob Schultz's gravestone to his church. 
This photo was taken in 2020. 23 September 1734. Christian Otto Schultz, at the age of 22, Jacob's father arrives in Philadelphia on the ship Hope. With what hope he arrives in this majestic land. We can only imagine the stories he must have told his family of his journey to America. 1798, historic Hudson Valley map. In the middle, at the bottom, you can see Schultz Landing. You can see a few buildings there. The video at the beginning of the presentation depicted the trail, Schultz Landing now, that pathway back in history. And as you noticed, there are no houses visible on either side for a long stretch from the river back towards River Road in Rhinebeck. Schultz Landing is near where the Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge now stands. The location of Christian Otto Schultz Farm is described by Rhinebeck Historical Society President David Miller in the RHS newsletter in the spring of 2018. David Miller describes how James Schultz, descendant of the Schultz family, arrived at the Historical Society. He wanted to do some research about his family, but he brought with him albums. And he allowed David Miller to scan those albums. So here David Miller is sharing some of those with us and according to the albums, Christian Otto Schultz purchased his farmland from Colonel Henry Beekman at the Kip Beekman Hermann's house in Rhinecliff. The album states it was at Rhinebeck that Christian Otto rented and subsequently bought 100 acres of land from Colonel Henry Beekman for 30 shekels of wheat per acre. The map on the next page shows a location of Christian Otto's farm on Old Post Road near Way's Corner, and his son Peter's farm at the south end of the village. In the top left, uh, you can see the number one where Christian Otto Schultz farm would be. And if you look to the left, you will see the Hudson River. And as we were just speaking of Schultz Landing. This album goes from Christian Otto through nine generations all the way to the present day James, the owner of the albums. There were several generations of boat captains in this line. The 23rd of July, 1752. Twins. The twins arrive and this is the Dutch Reformed Church Register. And we have a record of William and Jacob, born to Christian Otto Schultz and Christine Sharpenstein. The twins, William and Jacob, arrive on the 23rd of July, 1752. And their baptism is held at the Dutch Reformed Church. 1775 to 1783. These dates are very familiar to us in American history. Service, a family legacy, the Revolutionary War. Christian Otto and Christiana Margaret Schultz's children, 11 children, nine sons, two daughters. Eight of the nine sons served in the Revolutionary War. The oldest child, daughter Anna, married Henry Dacre Sr a Revolutionary War captain in the Albany militia. What a legacy, a family legacy. Articles of Association, 
Jacob Schultz signs in support of the Continental Congress for Rhinebeck Precinct with other citizens of Dutchess County in June and July of 1775. You will notice all of the links throughout. There are over 20 links throughout the slideshow. So uh, it, I would definitely recommend these links. There's a lot of information and some full documents, and in some cases, the full ebooks are available via the links. Also, on in the Articles of Association, there is a list of those who did not sign. Christian Schultz, John Schultz, and some of Jacob's future brothers-in-law did not sign. I'm assuming that Christian is the brother of Jacob rather than the father, simply because of his father's age. However, I might be mistaken. Land Bounty Rights. For his service, Jacob received land. And this explains a little bit about it. And the link here, you can go and read uh, a, a lengthy explanation of it. Jacob Schultz was an assignee for land bounty rights. His name is listed here in this book on New York history. Here, more land transactions for Jacob Schultz. All of these are indentures covenant between Jacob Schultz and other citizens of the area. And some are a little further out than Rhinebeck as well. Research has not been completed on these. They still have to be transcribed. I did list them here because I wanted you to see how much, how many land transactions there were. And this, this is just what we know about at this point. On 17th of August, 1779, Jacob and Ursula Shriver, the daughter of Johann Emmerich Shriver and Elizabeth Berger, marry. Jacob and Ursula Schultz's children, William, Leah, and David, John, Christina, and Anna, Reverend Jacob, Peter, and Catherine, and Martin. Twin brother William, Jacob's firstborn son William, arrives in 1780 and is named after his father's twin brother William. William's first son, Jacob, is named after his father's twin as well. After serving in the Revolutionary War, Jacob's brother William dies on the 1st of March, 1785, and is buried at the Old Presbyterian Church Cemetery in New Windsor, New York. The cemetery overlooks the Hudson River and Bannerman's Castle. William leaves no known descendants. And as a researcher interested in history, I'm wondering... We have so much about the Schultz family in the Rhinebeck area, the vicinity of Rhinebeck. Yet here we have William being buried in New Windsor. I became very interested, very curious, and began to research in New Windsor texts. 1794. Service, a family legacy for the church. Jacob serves the church as treasurer, deacon. 1799, he owned the pew. 1809, he actually purchased a pew for $250 with no annual rent. Imagine, 1809, $250. He was an elder in many years, from 1800 all the way up to 1829, many of those years. A building committee, 1808. He donated $20 to increase Dr. Bethune's salary from 600 to 800 in 1829. Only a PR Livingston and one other citizen contributed more than Jacob did. And they each contributed $40. The Dutch Reformed Church. This shot was a couple years ago, and imagine how similarly it must have looked when Jacob Schultz's family occupied a pew in the front on the left-hand side there. The pew is no longer there. We don't know exactly where the pew is or if it still exists. It was removed at one point. 
in history during renovations. The first Tuesday in April, 1799. A little more service and this time it is to Rhinebeck. He's elected to serve as a tax collector. Nancy Kelly, town historian of Rhinebeck has written many books and she is an authority on the area. This particular article only focuses on 1799, whether he served Rhinebeck as tax collector for more years is unknown. 25th of May, 1802. Going back to New Windsor and how my curiosity was piqued. Isaac Schultz continued his mill until his death on the 25th of May, 1802, when it came into the possession of his brother Jacob, who sold it to Peter Townsend. The fourth privilege was that embraced in the purchase from Jacob Schultz by Peter Townsend and was known as the Cannon Foundry. This foundry was erected in 1815 on a site immediately west of the Schultz Mill. Referring to a trial of cannon cast by Mr. Townsend, the National Intelligencer of July 17, 1817 remarks, the first cannon ever manufactured in the state of New York and of metal and accuracy of firing were never excelled. And if we are thinking that perhaps Jacob Schultz lost a business opportunity, let's read further. The enterprise was not a success, however, reports Rutenberg. 1810-1822, what an exciting addition to the presentation. A memorandum book from the year 1810 till 1822 in the hand of Jacob Schultz. This contribution was unearthed by our cousin Alice Benson and the Rhinebeck town historian Nancy Kelly at the Historical Society. Another document that was also unearthed is Jacob Schultz, a list of expenses. We have sugar, we have a bottle of panacea. We have a mention of board, paying board and some money going to the bank and to a Martin Garrison, and various citizens, local citizens here. Fascinating. 24th of November, 1830. Jacob Schultz dies and is buried in the Dutch Reformed Church now known as the Rhinebeck Reformed Church Cemetery. His status as veteran is indicated here next to his gravestone. Another contribution from Alice Benson and historian Nancy Kelly. There are a few pages here of a document that is after Jacob's death referring to his death. I don't know if this is completely the will or if it's another, if it's a draft prior to it. So there's a, it could be a preliminary draft of it. This needs to be transcribed and we will know more. Soldiers of the Revolutionary War. This gravestone locator is provided by Ruth Nelson, digital media coordinator of the Rhinebeck Reformed Church. During COVID, just a couple weeks ago, I reached out, emailed Ruth Nelson, and she responded uh, and provided this list of the row and the number of the location of the gravestones, which is a wonderful record for historians looking for the gravestone simply because many of them have faded. And it's difficult to distinguish the names of those buried. 
44 Patriots of the American Revolution. Jacob's memory is honored on one page. Each page is a snapshot of the veterans' service in the war, but also some comments about other life events. Sarah K. Hermans, Chancellor Livingston Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, a local author and volunteer at Historic Red Hook, has created this invaluable resource. She is also a great resource for the area. So we have Nancy Kelly's a great resource and also Sarah Hermans, if you're doing any research. Here, contributed by Alice Benson, we have the a couple here, and then a bit of a transcription, dated 10th of December, 1830. This petition to request approval from the surrogate court for Jacob's assignment of sons David, Martin, and Peter as executors of his estate was signed by Peter. Survivors are Ursula, his widow, William, Leah, and David, John, Martin, and Catherine, Peter, Jacob, and then his grandchildren, the children of his daughter, Anna, who predeceased her father. Family legacy of service continues. Jacob's namesake, his son, Reverend Jacob I. Schultz, was the first pastor of the Middlebush Reformed Church in Somerset, New Jersey. A footnote in the 100th anniversary address to the Dutch Reformed Church in Rhinebeck reads, Jacob Schultz, devoted elder and pillar of the church, was the father of Reverend Jacob I. Schultz, a minister of Mark and Power in New Jersey. Until in 1838, laid aside by an organic disease, he died in 1852. Reverend J. N. Schultz is, I believe, his son and the wife of Reverend Joseph Mann, for a series of years connected with our area mission was one of his daughters. I included Theodore Augustus Schultz here, even though he is not a descendant of Jacob, he is a descendant of Jacob's brother, Frederick. However, I would like you to see the similarity between some of the events in Theodore's life, who was known as Gus, and the next person in the presentation. So Frederick's grand, uh, grandson, Gus, died young. He was sickly with tuberculosis and he never served in the Civil War. At his death, he continued the Schultz family legacy of service by contributing land and funds to build First Christian, now the First Alliance Church, and the Masonic Warren Lodge, number 32. These are in the Hamlin of Clinton, Dutchess County, New York, Schultzville. I'm sorry, Schultzville is the Hamlet of Clinton. There are three links here that together contain that story of Schultzville. If you look at the painting in the back, you can see the Hudson River, which has had such an impact on the Schultz family through the generations. Now here, Jacob's grandson, John Riven Schultz, lived on farmland and ran mills in Rock City. He and his wife, Elizabeth, were childless, yet their legacy remains at the Memorial Lutheran Church in Rock City. Schultz provided the funds and the land to build the church, which celebrated 150 years from its founding on the 15th of September in 1868 with a memorial in 2018. The link here is to an article published in the Rhinebeck Gazette written by Burton Kuhn, who married John Schultz's niece. John Griffin Schultz and Elizabeth gave my great-grandmother their Bible when she married my great-grandfather. That Bible has passed down the generations into my hands and will continue in the Schultz family generations going forward. Service, a family legacy. Louis 
Lathrop Shook. Jacob's second great-grandson served as a colonel in the U.S. Army. He was a veterinarian in World War I, World War II, and Korea. Certainly a family legacy of service. Another second great-grandson, Alfred Kuhn, served as a private in the Army in World War II. More to come. Follow the saga of Christian Otto Schultz's American family. Want to know more about ancestors in New York State? Click on each link here to view resources. This presentation with more than 20 embedded links, the work cited, and Keeping New York History Alive, which is my website, The Schultz Family Legacy of Service, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the path back to our history and to our beginnings is again, come full circle. We're going down the trail that Christian Otto Schultz would have followed to arrive at Schultz's Landing. Thank you for viewing.